I hope. Are you over the match? I'm over the match now. I'm over it. it it's let's forget about the match. We've got Shrewsbury to come. Let's focus on that. Forget about that. You know. Anyway, what I thought I'd do since it's been such a bad bad weekend result wise, I thought I'd do a more uplifting video, a happier video for this Sunday night, so we can all start week on a, a bit of a high after everything that happened at Home Park. So, what we're gonna look at tonight, put something together. We're gonna have a look at the loan situation because obviously we've got players in on loan, but we've also let some players out on loan, which is a, a bit of a culture shift for Wednesday because we've been really bad at that in the last few years. So. Have a look at this. We've currently got five players out on loan, and I've just put a, a bit of something together. Hopefully, maybe put you in a bit of better mode for next week. So, as we know, Dawson's at Exeter, Hunt's at Grimsby, and Ryan Galvin's down at Gloucester City. But also this week, we're now Charles Hagen, young striker in the development squad. He's gone to Hampton and Richmond. Hampton. I always laugh when I hear that word, Hampton. And Young old looks gone out to Gainsborough Trinity. We'll have a quick look. Cameron Dawson obviously has gone to Exeter. How's it going for him down there? Well, he's having a great time of it. Four clean sheets. Saved a penalty. He's actually saved a couple of penalties in a shootout as well. He's just won their player of the month. Uh, and we can have a, a quick look at that because they're delighted with him. <coughs> Watts, shot from Callum Cook, what a great save from Cameron Dawson and the follow-up from Lee Angle produced a second save from Cameron Dawson. More of a treat, Wickham in towards the near post, Dawson will be folks first, Nick Samuel, not a good penalty. Just looking chance this and the keeper has to be on his toes, travelled pretty well last season. Zala driving through, keeper came out to meet him. Eastman! He's coming across for it and it's pushed away. He's still in the middle though. Eastman. And then. Here's the moment. Force a winner in this game. Nice little video there, round up from them. Obviously, they're delighted with him. And I've just got a few comments here that he's been getting in, you know, the local press and from the Exeter fans on Twitter. Too good for this level. Outstanding. No chance we can keep hold of him. Gives us such a solid base. This is for the newspaper. Man of the match, again. And it's great to see him having such a good time there because he had such a bad spell here. A horrific spell. At the hands of the fans as well. Really pleased to see Dawson do well down there. He had such a horrific time with Hukai. Really threw him under the bus to, to sort of make a political point. Either against Chancery or Westwood. Nobody, nobody knows and probably nobody's ever going to find out in all honesty. But he played in a struggling team. A struggling team with a, a fan base that were turning against its own club. And he became a bit of a, a fallout boy for that. And he wasn't playing brilliantly, but he was a young lad. And I know he's in his 20s. That's young in goalkeeping terms, I don't care what anybody says. Keegan said it, didn't he? Keepers aren't born to live 30. It's, it's a daft quote, but we know what he meant. And I'll say it again. For a young lad, Wednesday fan, to take some of the stick he stuck. Well, I think some of it will be on the pale, to be honest with you. Will he ever be able to rebuild himself back here? Well, we don't know. We don't know. But he has recently signed a new contract. I suspect it might be Wildsmith who might be the one who's under a bit of pressure when Dawson comes back. But he's out there, he's getting games, and I'll be honest with you, if he's enjoying it and he fancies it, I won't be surprised if he will like, you know, I'll go somewhere else and be a number one away from that pressure cooker that Ellsbury is because at the time he was here it was a very toxic atmosphere down there. In fact, that became one of the, the words of the season, didn't it? And the following season. Um, and every mistake he made, Westwood would have saved that. That shadow was always there. For the man, Wales Smith, to be fair. We look at Peacock Farrell. I don't want to mention yesterday's game, but we look at Peacock Farrell. What he's done yesterday, if Westwood's still here, he's probably getting it. Westwood would have saved that. 
I know you can say that's part and parcel of being a keeper at a, at a big club, the pressure you're under, but like I said, young, inexperienced lads in that environment, in a team that's struggling and probably going to be relegated. Very tough environment, so I'm delighted for him he's out there, uh, doing well, getting the plaudits, and enjoying his football as well, because it is a career and it's, it's what you do every day in your life. You, you've got to have some enjoyment out of it. It's not worth doing, is it? So, really pleased for him. Move on to the next player. And the next player is Alex Hunt. He's out on loan at Grimsby Town. Played three. So scored a goal for him, a winning goal the other week. In fact, we'll have a quick look at that because it was a, it was an absolute fantastic strike. Last minute of the game and uh, really cemented himself. He was a, a great player for him. He's only just uh, arrived, really. <laughs> So he's, uh, what a spank that is. He's been getting rave reviews down there at Grimsby Town. Uh, I think it's Paul Warren's in charge, the ex uh, Rotherham man. Fans and press, some of the, the comments here, absolute quality. First thoughts always forward, always wants the ball, star quality. He's becoming man of the match before kickoff. We have to do all we can to keep him a level above. So this really shows the sort of impact he's, he's making down there. And it shows the sort of impact that it can have on the kid as well. That's something that we, we've also got to figure into it. There's a world of difference between playing in the under-21s against other kids who are your age and your build and everything else, and playing out there on loan against blokes at the, at the end of the day. He'll learn more in a couple of months there than he'll learn in 100 games playing for under-21s. And some people won't see that. Some people will be like, those players at that level aren't technically as good. But football is not always about technique. There's different, there's different things that happen in football games. There's, there's different periods of games, there's different teams, different styles. And people bring a load of different qualities to a pitch. And playing against other little kids who are just doing the same things that you're doing, and it's all about having plenty of touches. And, you know, and that's great for development of your technique. But having... Game management is entirely different to having good technique, as we'll see. And that lad will learn so much more playing out there with him. I'm really pleased he's got that move. And I'm pleased that Wednesday, I started to get lads out there on loan. It's really good for... The only people who can benefit is, is the players on Wednesday. It's a no-brainer. No and I, I really wish we'd been doing it before. Another player who's out on loan, Ryan Galvin. It's been a bit harder to get any information on Galvin. He's the young left back. He's out on loan at Gloucester City at the moment, who are in the National League North and having a tough, a tough time of it this season. He's they've played five games. He's played in all of those five. He's stayed on the pitch in all five. He's not been hooked off, which is something that sometimes happens with, with young players who's out on loan. He's got one booking, and although I've struggled to find much about him in the press, obviously it's quite a small club. I've got this quote from his manager. Ryan brings us balance and quality and he's really good on the ball. Right. So that's another positive. I think he's there for a month with a, an option to stay. I suspect if he's having a really tough time with it then they are struggling. But they'll talk to Darren more, they might try and get him a move somewhere else maybe. League 2 or even somewhere, maybe a bit closer to home because obviously Gloucester is, is a way away and it's a different, uh, it's a different environment entirely. Again, it might be tough out there for him, and they've been having some, some tough results. They got, they got spanked 9-0 the other day, although they did get a man sent off after they were already 2-0 there, to put a, a bit of perspective on it, so those freak results do happen. Um, but it's games under his belt. He's a young lad. We saw him last year in the, the Cup games, Exeter, Everton. thought he gave a really good account for himself. One of the players, was, he's always got his head up, he's always looking, he's, he's got that awareness good track in and gets a foot in so I think there's a lot to come for him and I don't think maybe depending what happens with this one Darren Moore might try and get him back and try and perhaps get him another another long move but 
So far he's playing and, and that'll do him the world of good. We've also now, after the success of these three going out on loan and, and getting game time, that's the main thing. So that's any players out on loan if they're on the bench or they're not in the squad. These three have gone out and they've got game time. That's the main thing. They're all starting and they're all staying on the pitch. Two more has gone out. So Charles Higgins, the young striker, who he was involved quite heavily pre-season before we made the 14 signings. Um, he's a young striker, uh, diminutive, five foot eight. So he's not a massive striker. Uh, he's going to move down to Hampton, which always makes me laugh. Hampton, you never stop being a schoolboy, do you? Um, obviously down there in London, I think that's National League South. But, of course, we got him. He had been at Chelsea as a kid, so he's a, a lad from down south. So it might fit in with him to, to get a move down there on loan. And he, he, he probably might know the area, or within the area anyway. So. It, He'll not be too uncomfortable and too much of a, a step out of the comfort zone for him. And again, same thing. Young strikers especially. When you start playing league football, whether it's Championship, League One, League Two, whatever it is, you're going to get roughed up at times. And like I said, he's not a big lad, so he's going to get roughed up at times. Get used to that in men's football. Because, as I said before about Hunt, playing against other kids is all right. You know, you can, you, sometimes you can be the big lad. You can be the one who's doing the bullying. When you're down there at that level, when you're playing against lads who, it's, some of them, it's not going to be their main job. Some of these sides, they're not going to be paying them big money. You'll be playing against players and with players who rely on them bonuses, rely on them win bonuses. And to them, it is everything. It is serious. And it is, it is life to them. So you're playing with and against those characters, and I think that's... Mentally, I think that will really help prepare them for, for when they come back. So, Charles Egan's gone down there to uh, Hampton. Um, another lad who's gone out alone is Liam Waldo, young midfielder, 20 years old. He's gone out alone to Gainsborough Trinity, which will be not too far away, so probably that's a quick commute for him. Um, then in the Northern Premier League, which is a step below National League North, if I'm getting that right. It's all very confusing down there. There's a lot of North and South. And Premier this out of it. So he's at games with Trinity. Um, again, I've just been looking, his manager looks like a schoolboy to me, but uh, he's out there initially for a, for a month and then I think that can be extended. Uh, now, one or two people, how can we get in loans without windows shut, but you can loan to non league? Because that's a thought. Why, why aren't we fixing them up with better clubs? Why aren't we sending them out to League One, League Two? Transfer window, there's certain regulations in place, but you can still do short-term deals to the non-league all through this period. So if we keep doing that with these players and extending it and extending it, no problem with that. And it, as I said, a great way to get these young lads some vital experience in, in men's league football. So that more or less completes me round up there on the, on the long play. So good luck to them two lads and I hope the three that's already out carry on enjoying themselves and, and gaining that vital experience. One more thing before I go, I just want to say a quick well done to Sonny Dean, who uh, stepped in in the week in gold to help uh, Wednesday's development side get a, a cracking 4-2 win against Ossie and made some good saves in that game. So, well done Sonny and keep it up.